Yes. Yes, we can project. Um, how did you find this story? How did you find the book? Who brought it to you? Kerry Roberts, who uh, produced the film, gave me the book. Uh, strangely, she she was doing a little holiday reading, uh, light holiday reading. She was feeling she was feeling uh, something about the way the country was moving and wanted to, for her holiday reading, investigate a story, a personal story about somebody who was at risk of having their personal rights and freedoms being marched back and. Or, or that general kind of subject, and then had discovered Gary's memoir. She read it, she became very interested in it, discovered that nobody had the rights to it, even though her end point was like, this is not a work thing. And she was like, wow, this could be a story worth telling, it's great. She gave it to me, and she was unaware of how fascinated I was as a young person about institutions and being dragged away from my family and being locked up, like some irrational fear. And so I read the book very quickly. But that wasn't why I wanted to make the movie. Why I wanted to make the movie was because what I thought was going to be a book full of like blood on the pages and like you know, viciousness and this practice that I thought was made by hateful people, um, hateful parents sending their children home was actually a practice of porn, strangely out of love and the and a want and a desire to help that was just based on misinformation and I think it led by certain beliefs and the hopefulness that came out of the book because of Gareth's mother's turnaround uh, after she realised maybe that was a mistake and that there was more hurt than help made me feel like it was a hopeful story worth sharing as well as harrowing as it was and that's where it really started. So Gareth, what happens if you get a phone call? So Joe wants to meet you for coffee. So Nicole, tell us about the pressure and also Lucas of playing people who are very real, very contemporary, they're right there. And <laughs> Lucas, he's there. Yeah. Okay, I'm actually gonna steal this jump on this one. Um, I think I, uh, um, well, I read the book and I really fell in love with Garrett, uh, Garrett's voice and, um, and his story. And, uh, and when we met, I was, uh, I felt like we developed a genuine connection, and we, we, there was a genuine like we, we, we enjoyed being together. Or maybe I I enjoyed being with you. Really? That's why you're sitting so far apart. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, I I think uh, um, I uh, I felt one of the biggest motivating factors for me was I really wanted to um, uh, just. Do, do, do his story right, and, and I wanted him to see it and think he had been represented well. And I think that at times resulted in me leaning on him and asking him questions in a way that made me perhaps trust myself less and also maybe made you feel a little uncomfortable. Um, but uh, um, but it, it made it, whenever I looked at him, it felt like it was, you know, it's easy to remember that we're making a movie, you know, that, that, it, that there's something fake about what we do, but see, whenever I looked at him, I, I knew it was real, so, and whenever I returned to the book, I knew it was real, and, and that was, a, that was nothing short of, that was just a blessing, so. You know, you play your mom, obviously, she has a, you know, change of heart in the movie, but also, I mean, everything, she's a villain, you know, and I, and I obviously read a lot about, um, movie and making a movie and Joel, you said you didn't want villains. You know, wasn't it us versus that? Nicole, how did you how did you get in the mindset when you were letting her son go? Letting letting those guys take the lead and bring him to this camp? Because and you know, so much of our performance of a real person in the world is an interpretation of who they are. So it's my interpretation of her with all of the information. But she thought she was doing the right thing. And it was a very, what she thought was a very loving thing to do. And um, I mean, I know her now. And Garrett is her, I mean, her only child. And her, she's deeply committed to him. And her love for him is extraordinary and primal and there. So she would never want to hurt him. And so what she was doing, she thought, was what she was meant to do. And then to see the journey of that, which is 
okay, I'm, I've made a mistake and, I, and I'm now going to have to stand up and fight for him and fight for, fight for him to be his authentic self. Um, I think that's an incredible, I mean, as an actor, it's a fantastic thing to be given to play. And um, it's also to honour her and her heart because I want to say she is an incredibly loving woman and a very good woman. And um, you talk more about her. <laughs> oh my gosh. I could go on forever. But Nicole. Oh, um, no, no, that's it. You want to read it because I want to hear this. Nicole made my job incredibly easy. She really did. And the second, I, I feel like um, I was going through this parallel journey as an actor um, alongside of Jared, in that I had a lot of. Uh, anxiety about whether or not I, I was doing a good job and, and whether or not uh, there's all these crazy negative thoughts about myself and the second I got into the room with Nicole it all settled it, whenever I was with her and I looked I got to look at her I started breathing differently and, no really and, and, and I think that that's a, it totally Sorry, representative of, uh, <laughs> it's totally representative of the, the dynamic between Garrett and his mother too that that um that uh, uh, I think that may, may, maybe you you feel similarly about your mom too. So because yeah, I mean she's she's magic. <laughs> <laughs> How do you end up casting yourself besides saying? <laughs> Psychology of him, it's not his story, so you don't know what's really going on in the surface until the very end of the movie. But a man who spent 25 years of his life ascending the ranks of love in action after being a client and then running one of the most successful franchises of it and being responsible for the, for the uh, kind of changing nature of the therapy when he, to me, acknowledged things weren't working along the way. Um, knowing that the therapy was outward and damaging, yet also a reminder to himself that he was on some kind of right path was, was deeply interesting. When I met him, I was so annoyed at how charismatic and articulate he was, and that that was the, welcome, the warm mentoring welcome mat to these kids that were like, do I buy this thing that my parents are selling me? How do I feel? And that that guy would make me feel like this is possible deepens the damage, I think, because he was so like, come on, guys, let's let's really work this out. So I was like, I want I want to do that, um, and I felt drawn to do, to do it. Nicole, let's talk about your. 